a pleasant day and welcome to CSET Biology TCP. Or one might say the TCP Academy. Today we are looking at question number one of the 2024 May-June examination. I did promise that I'm going to be posting two other questions from that paper today. I'm not going to be looking at soil fertility because I think a lot of persons would have had good grasp of that area of the syllabus. So I promised to deliver and I'd ask you to do something for me for the greater part when I checked you did not. But I still, I'm still going to deliver on my end. All right, we want to define the term marketing as it relates to agriculture production. Now, marketing is a process of producing agricultural goods and getting them to the customer in good condition at the right time and price. It involves processing and packaging, then transporting them to the market, advertising and selling them to the buyers and that is for two marks let us up and down to the other question which is rather interesting i'm going to do some explanation here mary produces vegetable on one hectare of farm now don't be taken away by the one this is a big piece of land she gathers information from the ministry of agriculture's website uh, regarding the demand and selling price for vegetable in the main supermarket segments in her country. Table 1 shows the quantity demand, demanded and retail prices for each market segment. Table 1 retail price and quantity demanded for major market segments. Now here it is, hotel, restaurant, supermarket and green grocers. You are seeing it here and you are seeing the prices as well. Now suggest the best market segment to which Mary can supply her vegetables now when i saw this the very first thing came to me is what is going to be the end game so i use two things in salt in this one the size of the production two the quantity demand and the price can i make up on my profit by selling large volume or do i have the large or do i have that volume or I should be selling at a higher price, being I don't have the volume. Now, when we look at the hotel, the demand here is 100 kg, right? That's a, not a lot. That's not really a lot. If you multiply that, I think, by 2.2 and you see how much pound it is, a very small farmer can do that. Now, one hectare of farmland is producing a ton and more of vegetable. So, to say that you're going to be selling to the hotel... There's a big possibility you are going to have other logistic challenge selling the rest of vegetable that you have. So if you are on a very small entity, the hotel in this case would have been a very good option from my analysis. However, the size of a hectare, you are able going, you are going to be able to make that profit by selling the large volume. Now, you want to sell anywhere closer to a ton. So the larger demand is going to be big going to be better so what you want to do is to a big farm you are going to be selling in large volume however the price is going to be lower it is somewhat like the chinese you are getting a lot of things so the profit is on the bundle not on the unit so the hotel the profit here is more like on the unit and for the restaurant it's like on the bundle so for me it's going to be the restaurant that is going to be the best market segment for this particular case. Remember, it can shift depending on the retail price and the quantity demand. We have to also think about the production. How much are we producing? If you are not producing much, then normally you are going to be selling the thing a little more expensive. If you are producing in bulk, we call it here in Jamaica wholesale, then naturally you are going to be selling at a lower price. So of course, this volume, the, the 300 kg is better than 150 kg, better than 200 kg when compared with the pricing. So the restaurant it is for me. Then we look at this one. State one benefit of having different market segments for agricultural products. Now this is very easy. It facilitates diversity in demand and supply and pricing. Now when you have different market segments, it is going to cater for different needs. You can practice. You can actually grade your products 
and determine what grade is going to what market. You can also look at, at what point the demand is there. Is it that I have a demand on the weekend because I'm going to coronation market? Um, is it that I have a demand on a Monday because I'm going to a market in St. James? Now, the demand is going to be different and the market segment is going to be different. Now, if you look at the hotel, there's a constant fix there. A restaurant is pretty much a constant fix. But sometimes, depending on what is happening, the demand might increase and then you have to look at how much you can supply. So, of course, in answering the question, it facilitates this diversity with different uh, market segments. Persons want different quantity. Persons want different type. So that makes the different market segment really, really good. And of course, you are going to be able to get a different price. If you look at the table above, you could pull this information from it. James wants to grow tomatoes to sell to different market segment in his country. He is not sure how to go about marketing his product. So he seeks advice from the extension officer. As the extension officer outlined, three steps in marketing pro in the mar in the marketing process that James can take when marketing tomatoes. You must provide a reason for each step in the process. So here we look at the first one. Marketing step, I want to call it one. You need to research the market. You need to know if there's a demand. You need to know who you are targeting. Right? You don't want to be able to uh, you don't want to be planting something and then there's no market for it. It's going to spoil in the field. Who are you going to be selling to? Are you going to be planning planting 10 hectares of tomato to sell to your local um market? Or do you have hotel chains to take that volume? That is very important. So understanding the market helps with identifying who who your buyers are it helps you to understand the time of demand you don't want to be planting sorrel for a uh, summer no that is not going to be the best thing and you need to look at the market preference what size tomato is it that the market is looking for that is going to be very important in the market preference when do they want a tomato do they want a tomato green do they want a tomato right that is very important in doing the market research you are also able to analyze competitors so you are going to be planting and you think that there's nobody there. So you plant this big thing and when you realize the market is flooded with other competitors, it's just that they are seasonal and you're not seeing them. So it's very important to do the research that it helps you with, compet with competition, to identify competition, see who else is selling tomatoes um, in your area and what makes your product unique. Now, are you still going to sell tomato or are you going to be selling tomato at a different, should I, I like to say, um, we're not selling the tomato, we are selling convenience or we are selling price or we are selling flavor. What is it about the tomato that you are selling? Because everyone has tomato. So you need to know what about your tomato that you are selling. Is it a scar? Is it scarless? Is it smooth? Is it big? One way half pound, one way quarter pound. What is it about your tomato that you are selling? You have to be able to say that, uh, to identify what is it that you're going to be do doing when you do your market research. Then there's also the product preparation and positioning. Now, what this does, you are able to package the product to meet the market and you are able to send your graded product to the appropriate market. Now, you're not going to be sending some product to the hotel um, in banana trash. I mean, banana trash is going to attract insects and all other stuff going into the people and stuff. I'm um, probably slugging the banana trash and so on. So the product preparation and positioning. Of course, the product that are going to Carnation Market, they are in banana trash and so on. I mean, these customers are probably a little more tolerant and might not be able to see or trace what is happening with the goods when it gets into the, the market, the local market. Now, this helps to sort, package, and brand tomatoes for the target market based on the demand of the market. What is it that the market want? What size tomato? Do they care whether it is scarred or not? Do they care whether it is well ripe or not? Does the size matter? Um, if you are selling to the hotel, larger onions are going to be better. However, if you are selling to housewives, they want small onion that they can just use it and it finish one time for the hotel. They don't have the time to cut up this whole lot of onion. So one big onion is very good for them. So this is what we talk about product and product placement. 
Now there's also promotion and distribution. Now this help you choose the channel. Where are you going to be selling this thing? You are going to be selling it to the vendors you pass on the road. Are you going to be selling it in the market directly? Are you going to be selling it indirectly to all sales and um, persons? Agents are going to come and buy it. How are you going to be selling this thing? Um, promotional product. How are you going to market this thing as in promotion? Are you going to be using flyer, town cry, social media, newspaper print? What is it that you're going to be doing in your promotion and distribution to get your tomatoes to the market in a timely manner that you can make profit? A building relationship in the market when you start to do this promotion are you going to be offering samples are you going to be offering discounts are you going to be offering bundles how are you going to do this to make sure that you are selling just more than the tomato that everybody is selling you are selling a product that is going to be in high demand I like to talk about Jamaica there were, there, there's a beverage company that was here from before I was born. And then came a new beverage company. Nobody realized that this new beverage company would have had a space on the market. But they came and they actually dominated the market, uh, pretty much wiping away the beverage company that was here. Then came a third be beverage company. And they are growing so fast that you sometimes wonder, what is it that is driving the demand? Is it the same content that they are selling? Probably it appears to be the same thing, but what about that thing that makes that difference that the market will like? Now, this is going to take me to the end of this question. I'm going to try my best how I to see if I can push the other question out this evening. I have a class that comes up in a few, so I might have a little challenge pushing it out, or I might push it out very late tonight. Until we next meet, please be reminded to like, share, and of course, subscribe. Always remember to leave me a comment. Where are you watching from? Which school do you attend? Are you enjoying our videos? That sort of a thing. I know tomorrow is your exam. It's 2025. I do wish for you all the best. Get some rest tonight, but I understand for some persons, they are going to be putting in some extra work to make sure that they ace the exam tomorrow. Until we next meet, remember, what good.